So I'm wanting to do something different with my outrigger pads um, because for what I'm going to be doing with this backhoe, um, I don't really feel like this, uh, you know, two pad setup is really the best bet for me. Um, and of course you can see the, the rubber on these was gone long ago. Um, and for me, typically I'm actually on asphalt. Um, I'm not necessarily going to be digging in the dirt with this thing. So I got a piece of half inch plate that I think what I'm going to do or try to do anyways is cut out two pieces where the original pad went and bolt those onto the framework like normal and then have another piece of half inch that goes over the entirety of it and would cover up the center section here. Um, I just realized I don't know if I have enough steel for it. So I guess I'll get this laid out and see if I do or not. Okay, so those pieces kind of barely fit on here, but um, they do. And uh, I, I really don't like the grouping, but it's kind of what I got to work with. Um, I was just going to show this. So got the flange wizard on this one torch here, and I was hoping that the tubes on the torch were parallel, but they're actually different. Uh, the, the top tube on the cutting attachment is a smaller diameter than the lower one is. So you can't go off of uh, the tubes for square, but it looks like this section here is parallel to the tip. And so I just simply set up a square and try to judge it like so. Um, and so I got that torch set up with that guy there. And then I have this straight torch for freehand. Just because you can't, um, this doesn't work on the edges. Um, whoa. And I would like to point out just a fucking icy goddamn mess around here lately um these quick connects here are victors um and these quick connects have got a built-in check valve um victor also makes some with a uh, check valve and flashback arrestor but then they get really long and they actually get really freaking expensive too. Um, but these are the male ends that come with the Victor Quick Connects. And um, these ends here are actually off of um, some Harris Quick Connects that I had bought at one point. But what's cool is that the Victor uh, the Victor uh, connectors are compatible with the Harris which I think is quite nice. And, uh, but, um, yeah, I suppose we'll get to cutting. So I got some of it cut already. And then I'll cut a little more here. I got uh, a single lot propane tip. Um, and I'm not doing a very good job, but at the same time, why I'm doing it with the torch is neat.
So, not my proudest moment by any stretch of the imagination. But, coming along. So, got all the pieces cut out and hopefully it is somewhat obvious what I plan to do here. Um, these are cut out in the shape of the original pads. And the original pads mount with a couple bolt holes. So what I'm going to do here is drill uh, holes through these guys here. Um, and then actually in this plate as well. Um, and then these pieces here will get bolted directly to the foot. Um, and then I will weld this piece to both of these here so that I'll have a completely solid uh, outrigger pad. And I'm not, not at all happy with the cut that I did. Um, although it is kind of funny that you can see, you know, some spots are a little better than others. Um, you know, it's just simply, just get more practice with it. But, get it cleaned up, a couple holes drilled, glue it together. I had intended on doing a much better job of filming this process. And uh, as you can see, I got kind of carried away putting this thing together. Um, but so, I got the small plates, you know, the end plates welded to the main plate here. And then I have it bolted to the you know, the pad frame just for uh, not wanting it or to try and hold it so it doesn't warp as much as possible anyways. Um, and there we go. And uh, like I said, yeah, you know, kind of got carried away with doing things and what have you, but I guess that's the way it goes. But um, yeah, so uh, this is backwards on the pad at the moment. Um, cause you know, these guys here are actually going to face the pad itself, but, uh, like I said, just clamping it for fixturing purposes at the moment. Um, but I figured get you set up here and you can watch the, for now anyways, the last little bit of this, um, I, there is more welding that I want to do on this, but um, I'm actually going to put this on the machine for the moment and just try it out and see how I like it. Which, speaking of, so I have um, the vast majority of the stick rod that I have burned uh, or used over the years has been either Hobart or uh, Lincoln Electric. Um, I really like the Lincoln Electric Excalibur uh, 7018 rods. Um, and there are, shit, I don't know, there's probably 50 different Lincoln Excaliburs. Um, you know, like, the Excalibur is just their, like, line of rod, and then they have so many different variations in there. Um, but typically, the local welding supply only stocks one type of Excalibur, just because, you know, a lot of the other stuff is very special purpose. Well, not very. Suffice to say, there's a lot of different ones, and... Um, most welding supplies will only carry like one, two, maybe three versions of the Lincoln Excalibur. Um, but buddy of mine told me to try this, uh, Aesop Atomark. Um, and so I bought 30 pounds of this. Um, I got, uh, um, 332, eighth inch and 532. And, uh, same thing with this, you know, I'm sure there's a great many number of, um, different specifications of this rod like I'm sure they make it in 110 18 and blah 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 and um, you know I don't know which one of these well I suppose part number would be this would tell you specifically what this is but I just asked my local weld supply for some Esau Batamark and this is what they sent 
Um, buddy of mine said he really liked it. I really don't like this stuff. Um, I've only used the eighth inch and the 332 of this so far, but I've gone through the 10 pounds of, um, or sorry, I've only used the eighth inch and 532 of this so far. I've gone through 10 pounds of the 532 and almost 10 pounds of the eighth inch. And um, I'll do another video on it later, um, kind of more detail. But the slag off of this Atom Arc uh, seems to be, it, it, it reminds me more of 6013 slag than it does 7018. And it's, relatively speaking, in comparison with the Excalibur, uh, hard to diffic or hard to remove. Um, the Lincoln Excalibur, uh, if you get the settings right, it'll actually just like snake peel off of it. And then if you say burn one rod and then tie into it immediately and start burning another rod, then the previous rod will actually like snake peel off and actually just fall off the weld while you're welding on the other one. But, um, this one, I, 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 I just don't like it as much. The flux coating on the rod seems much more brittle. The slag is more difficult to remove, which, like I said, that's a relative term because, you know, it's still, it's still not a big deal. But like I said, the Excalibur, you can usually just take, you know, a fresh rod and just kind of do one of those numbers. Um. But yeah, the flux is brittle, the slag is difficult to remove. Um, it, 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 it feels to me like it doesn't burn as crisp, um, but not by much. Like, you know, you can see it does a good job. And I am most certainly no pro. And a fucking light's flashing. But... My deal wants to focus. You know, you can see there's a good, you know, weld appearance and everything. But, um, and it stinks. Um, when this rod burns, it kind of smells like uh, burning pine needles or something. Um, and it's just, I just don't like it. But, um, I've got a Milwaukee light shining down and the battery's dying. So that's why the lights flash in there. But uh, I'll run this last rod here and then uh, I guess call it quits. And, uh, well, I guess I'll pause it really quick. And so, yeah, you know, when I say that that Aesop rod doesn't run as crisp, um, you know, it's not, it's not, it, it's not like this stuff is dog shit or whatever. It's not like it's dog shit, I just feel like the Excalibur is better. Um, and so this is the Excalibur that I use, um, and then there's the stock number there for the, you son of a bitch, for the specific rod um, that it is. But uh, yeah, I guess, you know, 
if somebody's got experience with these um, or anything else for that matter too, um, you know, feel free to chime in and leave your opinion and curious to see what you have to say. Um, I guess too, you know, you can see that both of these come in uh, uh, hermetically sealed containers. I don't do any coated work at all, period. Um, and so, you know, I don't necessarily have a need to buy rod like that. Um, but I just feel like the little bit of cost difference for the Excalibur is worth it in how well it runs. Um, but, you know, personal opinion and really a lot of it too is just kind of what you get used to. Um, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people have differing opinions on different stuff not necessarily because one is better or worse but just because that's what they started with right like it's kind of like the uh the glock versus 1911 um pros and cons and arguments 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 to be made for both sides but um when you end up talking to people it usually ends up being that the 1911 fans like it because that's what they started out on and the glock fans like it because that's what they started out on um but uh yeah get the pad <clears throat> excuse me get the pad on the backhoe tomorrow and um show you what that looks like and um i encourage you to chime in and leave your experience with welding rod